Well, good morning, good afternoon again to you all. And uh, again, welcome to the Signify Lighting Academy webinar of this month. And today we have uh, Mr. Ed Nardell, the authority on the topic. Dr. Nardell is a professor in the departments of medicine and of global health and social medicine at Harvard Medical School and an associate professor in the departments of immunology and infectious diseases and of the environmental health at the Harvard School of Public Health. His research interests involve the control of tuberculosis under resource limited conditions. It is a pleasure to address such a large and interested audience and I uh, am thankful to signify for the invitation. As mentioned, let's see if we can make these go. There we go. Um, I'm going to be talking about why uh, ultraviolet is really an essential intervention in, in this pandemic and has been essential actually for a very long time in dealing with airborne infections. It, it is not a new technology. And in fact, the pandemic has um, stimulated a lot of uh, new or revived technologies, few of which have the evidence for efficacy and safety that uh, germicidal UV has. What you're looking at here is the 1946 text by Lukish uh, from GE on the applications of germicidal and erythemal uh, infrared energy. Uh, he was quite an authority on it. And if you go back to this textbook, which I have a copy, you'll see that um, the fixtures are, are not dramatically different than, than they are today, uh, but there have been advances in, in the use and application of uh, germicidal UV. And I'll be talking about some of those, particularly re with regard to this pandemic, but also in an actually a much longer standing and even more deadly pandemic that exists today. And that is actually tuberculosis under non-pandemic times, the single greatest killer of adults globally. And it is unquestionably airborne, whereas the airborne aspect of um, uh, COVID-19 has been very slow to be realized, but now is accepted. So uh, way back in 1942, actually it was in the late 30s, the publication is 1942, William First Wells, who had been a professor at Harvard, but he did this work when he was at University of Pennsylvania, um, put ultraviolet fixtures in, in schools uh, in two suburban uh, suburbs of Philadelphia, and to weigh the experiment against success, he knew, uh, as uh, medicine did at the time, that older kids were were less vulnerable to to uh, measles because some of them had been exposed, and younger children were more vulnerable. So the older kids uh, became the controls, and the younger kids were the uh, subjects of the uh, had the UV in their classrooms. And these are two different schools: Germantown, PA, and Swarthmore, outside of Philadelphia. And you'll see the rate of measles per week. So we have to be a little bit more careful with exposure of humans with 265 to 280. Um, this is a prototype UV fixture um, being tested in South Africa. This is now probably five or six years old. Uh, the pandemic has stimulated quite a bit of work on LEDs. But coming along, it would look very different. Still, heat is a huge problem as well as power for LEDs at the moment. Um, I was in the Moscow airport in uh, uh, the secondary airport and noticed the egg crate ceiling and all the stuff above it and wondered if we couldn't uh, also think about using more or less bare bulb UV above an egg crate ceiling, blocking the UV from getting to the lower room with the egg crate. We could put the fan above or below. And this has now been done commercially in in custom installations and you get about, you get several times the efficiency because these lamps without louvers are at least five times more output. So it's a good thing, but it's not a product you can sell easily. Uh, perhaps floating panels of um, 
uh, egg crate could be used uh, as a, quote, very large fixture. But it, getting away from the louvers, we could put a fixture here without louvers on it, here just an illustration. And different size louvers, uh, the larger the better and deeper, uh, we found in testing this. And we, again, showed in terms of equivalent air changes per hour, a louvered fixture versus an unlouvered fixture is depending on number of lamps. So tremendous to get away from louvers. And the other way to do that, of course, is with open fixtures when you have ceiling height that is adequate. So we published this as a crate UV, and anybody can do this. Uh, it's a published study. And just an example of how we get about seven times more efficiency in the tall room if we were to use a crate and, and more or less uh, bare bulbs rather than a fixture. 